Welcome to the show, Wen. Tell our audience a little bit more about yourself and your present focus. Well, uh, I am a native of Dallas, Texas. I uh, graduated from the University of Texas with a degree in communications. And uh, shortly after I graduated, I moved to Brazil and lived many years in Brazil. And while I was there, I developed a passion for real estate and ended up getting my real estate license and uh, worked for several years in the real estate business there. And then I decided to move back to the U.S. And I was involved in real estate in the U.S. from uh, both an investor side and a buyer, uh, buying and selling side. And um, I think I really got a feel for what it's like to work in two very different markets. So when I came to Portugal, I feel like I was aptly prepared to, to deal with the Portuguese market and all its nuances and variations because everywhere you go, it's a different, it's kind of a different ball game. <laughs> I find that people that travel a lot, they, they, usually their social IQ is much higher than most people because from a social perspective, when they are now dealing with people, they have all this track record of visiting different countries. What are your thoughts on this? Well, it, it, in between living in Portugal and living in the US, I took a, I took a hiatus of a year and a half and I ended up traveling around the world. Uh, my primary goal, I guess, was to learn Spanish, but I also really wanted to learn about the cultures in other countries. So I made it a point to stay in each country for at least a month and a half, often, uh, sometimes three months. So I did that for a year and a half. And the things that I learned, the people that I met, the, the cultural differences that I became aware of, I think are something that I will have with me and that enriches me as a human being forever. I think one, one of those, uh, one of the things that, because you are, so, you are an incredible salesperson, I'm in sales as well, I'm fully devoted to, to becoming uh, even better. You will become like more attuned to psychology and behaviors of people. And especially when you are recruiting, which is a big part of this game, I would like to hear some of your thoughts when you are like interviewing new agents. So some serious no-nos and some pluses when you are like having this new person in front of you. You know, Diogo, that's a really good question for me because I think one of the, I think one of the biggest differentiators in my company is the people that work with me that are on my team. And uh, when I opened this company and I was trying to figure out what, uh, what would really make this company exceptional and different from other companies in the market, I came to the conclusion that the most important thing is the talent that we work with. And so I think my recruiting progress, it, my recruiting process is more rigorous maybe than most companies and I'm really looking for a certain personality type. I'm looking for, I look for experience but experience isn't the first thing that I try to find. The thing that I'm really looking for is a spirit, uh, a, a team player. Uh, I'm looking for someone that is organized and I'm looking for someone that has CRM skills and knows how to how knows how to be organized on a CRM system, which frequently is very difficult for sales agents because by nature they're normally very outgoing and very communicative, but they hate to sit down at a desk and do the paperwork. That's right. So I think what makes a really great agent is to have both sides of the coin. You need to have administrational skills to be able to run your own business because at the end of the day, that's what an agent is. They, they, they're their own bosses. And they have to be able to handle the sales as well as the administrative. And to do that, you need to be organized, but you need to be a very outgoing individual 
One of, the one, one of the things that I've learned is sometimes you need to ask some trick questions. And I, when I say this, I know this might sound a little off, but what I mean by this is that you need to make sure if you are dealing with an entrepreneur or someone that is looking for a handout. And those people usually don't do well in how our line of work. So I would like to hear like some practical ways you have of like kind of filtering out people that you know that they're just not going to work well if they, you recruit them. Well, first of all, it's their mindset. I really evaluate what their personality is like and if it will fit well with my team. And I think they can, they can come from any kind of a background. Um, I think uh, from what I have seen, some, some of the best salespeople out there are bimby uh, salesmen, salesmen and saleswomen. They know how to sell. They know how to treat their customers. They know that they, they come from a very good training background. They are professional. They're serious. They are entrepreneurs in in the very best sense. So that I, I don't think it's so important what they've done. I think it's more important who they are, and what their core values are, and what their goals are. Do they know how to set goals? Do they know how to reach those goals? Do they know what their objectives are? Do you find that you need to keep working with them, or it's like uh, you hire them? tell them the guidelines and then let them do their thing? You know, I, uh, when I first moved to Portugal to really get a feel for the market, I ended up working with a couple of big companies here to really understand what was going on in the Portuguese real estate market. So I got a feel for what it was like to work for those big companies and how, how their agents, uh, system was set up. And some of them had good training programs and I learned a lot, but something that I always felt sort of disconnected with was a lack of support. No matter how good you get, I think it always helps to have guidance, to have someone there mentoring you, helping you, answering your questions, especially in the beginning when you're starting out. It's absolutely key that you have someone that you can go to and you can always count on to, to lead you in the right direction. I mean, at the end of the day, a real estate agent is dealing with someone's, oftentimes someone's greatest asset. And it takes a team to do that. Not, you know, not just one person can cover everything in a real estate deal. So you, you kind of, you organize daily get togethers in order to keep people kind of, kind of in check so, so that they, they are like more accountable because they are seeing each one's progress? You know, I'll give you an example. Um, every Monday morning, as a matter of fact, today is Monday, so we had one this morning. We have a team meeting and all my agents uh, should be present my, I have a dedicated marketing consultant that is present in the meeting and I have uh, my back office administrator who is present. And uh, in that meeting, we discuss between us what listings we have gotten, who are the buyers that we have, how we can help one another with those deals, uh, where we should start to really promote our marketing for, uh, for, uh, the future next month, uh, what our forecasts are. I mean, there's a lot of information that goes back and forth and you can't do that without regularly having contact. And every Tuesday, tomorrow, I have, I schedule an hour with each of my agents and we go over everything that they want to discuss in a much more detailed manner. And, um, and, it's been working out really well. I mean, I don't feel like anybody, especially during this, this COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis that's going on right now, I don't think you can cut anybody loose to work on their own. I think it's more important than ever to work as a team. So essentially, it's like leading from the front. When you start feeling some members of your team getting 
unmotivated, you show them that what you, what you are telling them how to do, it works. Uh, you know, I, do, I never tell them what to do. I make suggestions. I suggest oh, okay. to them that they could do it this way or they could do it that way. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of video tutorials online now. You can get anything on YouTube. So if I see that one of my agents is weak in negotiation skills, I'll recommend some material for them to look at and try to guide them in that direction. If I see that another agent is work on, is weak in CRM skills, I'll have them do a session with my back office uh, administrator to help her uh, to uh, to have her help pull pull them up to speed. So yeah, you know, everyone's good in some things and not so good in the others. So we try to help them where they feel like they need assistance. Gotcha. I, I find that people that are uh, more they are stronger in their social department. Usually they, they have assessments and think about things a lot like, like you do, because this, what you're saying now, it doesn't come out of like, out of the blue. You, you must have some thought process regarding what works and what doesn't. Picking up on that, I'd like to address regarding the real estate current situation, because this is your line of business. And for people that are listening to this, whatever the platform they are on, and thinking about Portugal as a real estate, from a real estate perspective, meaning getting some capital, uh, some capital in, in here. So how would you point them in the right directions, like places to visit, things to look at, like current situations that you think is important? Because you, you, you come from where they come from mostly, the US. You know, Diogo, I, um, we're going through extraordinary times, and I think the repercussions are going to be felt for a long time. Uh, a huge part of Portugal's economy has uh, traditionally been supported by tourism and real estate, and tourism, I think, has taken a major blow and will take quite a while to spring back. I don't really feel that way about real estate because... Um, I think that through the way the government has handled the situation with Portugal in, in being very proactive and in, in, I think, handling it from a really stellar point of view, uh, I think the world is looking at Portugal sort of as an example right now, which is proven by the report in Forbes magazine this month, uh, indicating that the number one place in the world post COVID-19 to retire is Portugal. I, what better, what better advertisement could we have for that? And I think that's going to that, that things like that attra uh, attracting attention like that is definitely going to stimulate our market. And uh, you know, Portugal is going to continue to be an attractive place for investors. Uh, just for so many reasons. We've got amazing climate. We are, it's a, has a May 3rd on the peace index, the world peace index. Uh, we have attractive tax regimes. We've got great food. We've got great wine. We've got beautiful beaches. It's, I think it will come back and I think it will come back. Then, I, I think it'll come back faster than a lot of people are predicting. Yeah, I agree. I think you, you sometimes you get a little bit biased when, especially because it's my case because I've lived here for so long. When you hear uh, people coming like outside in perspectives, it makes you look at what you already pretty much what you see every day from a different perspective. It's like people telling you this building is incredible and say, yeah, it actually is incredible. So you're actually making a point of this now. I think it's important to hear your, your thought when you are telling me this because he keeps reminding me that uh, we have circumstances that are much better from different economies, right? Undoubtedly. And I think that's just human nature to sort of take for granted what's right around you <laughs> and not really see it until someone comes in and you get the opportunity to see it through the eyes of, of a stranger. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Well, one other topic that I wanted to, to cover here is that how are, you going, how are you getting deal flow since all of us are kind of like stuck at home now? So how are you, how are you solving this, especially because this is kind of a more of a face-to-face -face, uh, situation? 
You know, we have been, from the very moment this happened and we went into quarantine, we as a company, Brightman Group, has been extremely proactive. And we have had weekly, in the beginning, almost daily meetings on strategizing and preparing uh, our team to deal with this. So we are working, what are we doing? We are working on beefing up our marketing. We are touching base with our, our clients. And that not just on a not just on a professional level, but on a personal level as well. We are um, developing better uh, better uh, tools for showing our clients properties virtually. We're working on 3D images. We're working on uh, 360 degree videos, drone videos, to give a better to give a better, uh, uh, to give an alternative also to our clients to actually going there and being present. But sales wise, um, honestly, we, uh, we have done really well this past month. And uh, we may be, we, we have proposals on the desk for two of our biggest deals ever. And they were not deals that were started pre-COVID. They were deals that were started after this within the last month. So I think, and actually, one of them is an investor, and one is an overseas client. And I think, I think the market hasn't stopped. I think it will continue to move forward, and there'll be opportunities that weren't available before that will make it even more attractive. And I think this will also probably affect, uh, short term at least, uh, prices. So we'll see maybe less of a gap between asking price and selling price, which will be really good for, for buyers and sellers. Are you using, as a source of leads, because I, I'm, a, I'm a door to door guy. It's just all, all that I've done throughout my life, even when I was a toddler. So it's natural for me to like being like in a direct sales situation. So, but since we are like now in a quarantine type of state, are you like revamping your efforts on digital marketing? You bring outside people just to get you more like more leads in that, in that fashion. Do you work referrals? Um, yes, we most definitely have. We're working. That's, that, that's part of our short-term and long-term strategy. We, I think, uh, uh, Brightman Group in general is uh, is is somewhat unique. I know there are some companies that do this, but I are, uh, we have a very aggressive lead generation marketing campaign that we do that we offer to our agents. We actually give them buyer and seller leads, and we invest a lot of time, a lot of our resources into doing this. So I think during times like this, when perhaps it is difficult for an agent to do lead generation, this helps tremendously. Although I don't think it's something that they should rely on 100%. Um, what, do you, what do you mean? Um, uh, to, I think a client, first of all, the commission scheme is different. If uh, the Brightman Group supplies the lead, the commission scheme would be different from what, uh, less advantageous, let's say, from, than from what it would be if the agent brings in their client. But also these, the relationships that you develop with your client are really what brings in your business long-term. And that's something that we really, I, I, I think it's something that differentiates Brightman Group agents is exact, or, or any really good agent is that they're looking at this from a long-term perspective and not just close the sale. Gotcha. But as, as an, uh, from an investment side, I, I find that, and yeah, I'll have to be blunt with this, it's easier uh, for me to get lead generation people from the US than it is like in here in Portugal. So uh, I like to hear your thoughts because if you like use, you, are you using a foreign agency because you mostly work with foreign agents, so the, more foreign investors, so that the leads come come in, or actually do you work with local companies as a lead gen source? We have our own lead generation source that actually we have several lead generation sources. Um, one of them is target marketing through Facebook and Instagram campaigns. 
Um, we have done market, I, we'll talk specifically now about the US market. We have done extensive um, uh, demographic uh, research studies that show where we should target market our, um, our campaigns for certain properties. The markets aren't always the same. If you're going to, if you're marketing a luxury property, it will be one target. If you're lux, if you're if you're marketing a condo in a middle class neighborhood, it's another it's it's another target market. So we're very careful about about how we do that, and we track it religiously. Uh, we also have developed partnerships with agencies in the U.S that um, uh, we were, especially in Florida and New York, where there are a lot of uh, overseas uh, uh, expat buyers that uh, go back and forth, especially the Brazilian uh, community. And another lead source that we have, which is quite remarkable, was developed by one of our agents, Jorge Prospero Santos, and it is a something that he has been working on for the last four years, and it is a lead generation, uh, a lead generation uh, app, I guess you could call it. It's not really an app; it's a cue card that um, a I'll give you an example. A restaurant could put this cue card in the, on their tables. And a tourist walks in, sees something that they're interested in. They scan the cue card. They get all the information about the property. And then the restaurant that was promoting our lead generation is able to track that um, until the time of a sale. And he will make a commission on top of that. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. And regarding main, main lead gen sources like direct mailings and all that, you don't use any of that? Um, no, not really. We, uh, we focus more on marketing campaigns that, uh, are, you talk, are you referring more to like email? Um, no, di di direct mailings, like, the, yeah, letters. No, uh, the agents do this. Uh, some of them have blogs. Some of them have enormous uh, Instagram followers and connect with their database however they see fit. We as a company, Brightman Group, we don't really, we, we have not started in that area. Gotcha. Because it's like, it's like we were talking about in the, in the beginning of this, this show. It's like you are more prone because you are more biased in the things that you are more accustomed to. And I like direct everything. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so I should like make a mental assessment of trying to start doing things differently now. And well, I found on that note, I found, uh, I mean, in the morning I open my emails and I'm inundated with so many emails that really I click through them and trash probably I trash anything that's not urgent so I don't know how effective those email uh, those email marketing campaigns are uh, but we we haven't invested in that yet no, I, I don't invest in email as well. So like direct mailings, like actually write letters and actually send out to people. It's like Gary Albert, the, the famous copywriter used to say, it's the A pile and the B pile. So people like, like uh, standing like lo all looking at their mail and see what goes to the trash and what kind of gets them interested in. So I usually like go to high net worth uh, neighborhoods and I just send them letters or actually knock on the door. Since we can't do that now, like I'm always interested in learning how people are doing things now. Oh, you know, that's interesting because I didn't mention this. My agents, almost every one of them, are great prospectors. Really good. They know, they, uh, they have an excellent approach. Um, and uh, it has been, that has been really effective. I had an agent that went out on Saturday in COVID <laughs> at that time, <laughs> and she, she brought back she brought back two listings. Oh, that's cool! And f from door knockings or 
from walking down the street. <laughs> oh, that's 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 cool. I actually I went to Quinta da Marinha, and there's like this enormous mansion there. I just knock on the door, and the guy opened, and we started talking, and ended up like submitting a proposal for a 200 million trust fund. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! That's fabulous! I was just like, dude, who are you? <laughs> Come in. <laughs> See, you can't, it's, it's really, it's under, I think it's underestimated the power of personal contact. And, you know, that, that's networking is a fundamental part of doing business in our, in the real estate market. And I, and that's one of the reasons why we promote the Cascais real estate meetup, because uh, I think it's very essential for and uh, for the agencies to be working together. And I really encourage when I organize that meetup for agents from all different agencies to participate, because I think this, this information share is essential, not only to doing business, but to giving our clients the best business, uh, the, the best deal possible. I, I agree. One of those millionaires that I met once where he invited me for a cup of coffee, he said, dude, since you're here, let's, let's talk. He asked me a couple of questions. And one thing that he told me that I will never forget is that business is done by relationships and wealthy people have really strong networks. And you have to make a point of keep building those relationships, quality relationships, because it makes everything easier. What do you think? Oh, I totally agree. I totally agree. It's all about contacts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. And go going back, some advice to your younger self, what would you say? Some advice to my younger self. You know, I would have said study harder. Try to define what it is that you want to do as early as possible and go after that goal with everything that you have, with all your resources, with all your energy, <laughs> with all your passion. And don't do something that you're not passionate about because you won't be a success. You may get by, you may do well, but you'll never get to where you really want to be unless you bring passion to it. I agree. I think it's part what the market wants, part, uh, part your passion and part what your strengths are. Because if some, uh, one of those is missing, the, the rest won't work. I, I agree with that one. And for the future, where do you see yourself and your company heading forward? Uh, you know, what I see, I, I see my company, I think from, from a different point of view from what is traditional, uh, traditional with Portuguese real estate companies. Uh, when I started Brightman Group, my focus was not specifically on my end client. My focus was on finding quality talent, exceptional talent to work with me, to be able to offer my client the absolute best service that, that we possibly could. So I think my, my real power is in my team and I plan to grow that team in the future, but we're never going to be about quantity. We're going to be about the quality of the people that work with us and I see us growing exponentially in the future, but really from a foundation of quality and client care. Nice. It's all about the client journey and what we can do to streamline it, to, to be the best that we can be, to be a benchmark in the Portugal real estate market. One, one last question, and I'm a bookworm. I read like an insane maniac. <laughs> so uh, run us through some of your favorite books that you would like to recommend to, to the investors that are listening. You know, uh, right now I'm reading a book uh, called Janisville. And it is about the crisis in the United States in 2008 and how that destroyed um, it, it was the headquarters of the largest GM factory in the United States and GM had to close down their factory and thousands and thousands of employees were put out of a job overnight. 
and it's about the repercussions of how that how that affected the town and how it affected the lives of the people on an individual basis. And I think it's really pertinent to the situation that we're going through right now. Cool. And finally, where can people get a hold of you if they have any further questions and want to learn some more? www.brightmangroup.com. Okay, gotcha. And it was wonderful having you with us today. We'll speak soon. Thank you so much, Diogo. It was great being here.